Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be making a table decoration for my girlfriend's Thanksgiving table, and I hope you'll stay tuned. So you know I like to take gifts to anybody's house whenever I go there for holidays, and my girlfriend is having us over tomorrow, and I bought this amaryllis at Walmart. It was very inexpensive, and what I decided to do was to cover the outside of it with um, tissue paper from Dollar Tree. And when I started thinking about how that would look, I decided that it would be too transparent and that I needed to have a white layer. So I'm using this, um, it's from Delusions, I think. Yeah, it's Delusions white paint. And I'm just going to, I'm doing a very light coat because all I want is to make sure that this silver isn't super silver. So I'm going to just kind of go over it so that it has more of a whitewash to it, you know, not like a, not like an opaque white paint job, just this kind of look. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'll show you what I'm gonna do for the um, tissue. I'm not gonna even wash my hands, that's right. I'm gonna leave my hands exactly as pretty as they are right now. I bought tissue paper at Dollar Tree a while ago that's Christmas inspired, and I really, really liked it, but I hadn't come up with a plan for what to do with it yet. And this, I think, is a good use for it because um, the, the um, as I said, the paper is kind of transparent. And um, now that I've painted the bucket, I think it'll look good. I might be wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to kind of cut off the very edge of it because it's folded. And I want this to be... So I'm just going to cut this little bit off. So what I want to do is I want to get pieces that are between, let's say, a half an inch and an inch wide. And, so, oh, there's one that's just kind of, oh, look, that one's just loose. Um, it doesn't really matter the width I make it because um, our goal here is just to have, ooh, that was bad. I'm into a very thick section, I guess. Our goal is just to have a lot of strips. I'm gonna see how very, very tacky. I was gonna say, I'm gonna see how tacky my bucket is. And what I think I'm gonna do is take my heat tool and just kind of flap it around on there and see if I can dry my paint so I don't have to wait forever. I don't wanna hurt my plant either, so. Alrighty. I think that's pretty good. So I got my lid off because that was always the hardest part for me in any project is getting the lid off of anything. You know how that goes? Maybe that's not the same with everybody but me. Just me, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to leave I'm going to leave the um, top lip without any paper on it, I think. Here's my plan. I don't know. I want to keep this on and make sure that the dirt doesn't come out of it. So what my goal is, I was trying to explain this, but you know, sometimes I get distracted. I only want to go up to this little lip at the top. I don't want to go onto that lip because I think if I go onto that lip, I'm going to have um, too much um, bulk on that. So I think when, instead what I want to do is just have that lip just be a lip. Okay, I said it. We go. Sometimes a lip is just a lip, right? Okay. Well, that's what we're shooting for. So I'm going to use a kind of a Mod Podge material. I think I got this at Michael's. It's from... Uh, oh, I'll turn it on its side. Why does everything have to go on its side? It's from Art Minds. It's decoupage and it's matte finish. Anytime it says it's a decoupage, 
that's what Mod Podge is. And it's not Mod Podge. It's Mod Podge. In case you ever wondered, that's what it is. And I'm going to line up my strip as straight as I can get it. And I'm doing that with the, using the, um, there's a design that you probably can't see on the can. And I think it'll work well with my trees because um, it's kind of like a, almost like a starry pattern. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to pounce over this with Mod Podge. If you've ever done this, the easiest way to know what you're doing is to kind of make a line, like a fold in your paper at the very bottom and then try and cut that away because that'll make it so that that line will give you something to cut from and it'll help you to stay so that you're not hacking off a lot of your image. You really want to you want to keep checking your design to make sure that your design is straight up and down because it's really easy to get distracted and not have your design straight up and down. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to turn off the camera and just finish this part of it so that you don't have to just kind of watch paper dry and then I'll be back when I'm on to the next step. Okay, I have a new plan of what I want to add to the front of the bucket. I thought it would be cute to add some kind of bling and I had these that you get at the Dollar Tree. Well, you used to get them at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you still can get them at the Dollar Tree, but you used to be able to get them at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add a little dollop of glue right there. I'm going to try and go right up to that lip. And hopefully it'll grab I'm not putting a ton of glue on, but I am making sure that the glue that's there is um, is not super hot before I stick my finger in it. Because, you know, <laughs> learned that the hard way so many times. Okay, so I never really learned it because clearly I still keep doing it. This stuff is kind of neat to work with because it does have a little bit of give in it because ha it's, it's, uh, it's on like a material. So it's not, it, it looks like it's very um, rigid, but it's not. And that makes it really easy for things like this. And if any glue seeps out the top, you want to try and grab it. If you don't get it now, you can always use your hot glue gun and um, melt it later. But I'm not sure when I say that, I'm not sure if that would be smart to do when you've got a plant in here because you know what what if it overheats the plant I don't know I mean I don't know if that's I don't know anything about plants like would that hurt it I don't know so I don't want to I don't want to tell you to do it and then have you ruin your amaryllis the best thing you can do is to make sure that it's at the top that that you feel the the same amount of material the whole way around you know when you run your finger over the top I have to say I think that helps me to line things up if I do that. Then I have this flower that I could put on the side, but it's got this really big well, let me let me turn this on its side first so you can see it. That's what it looks like right now. Not bad. I mean, it's not it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Then this flower has this whatever you call that thing, on the back. And I'm going to use my Tim Holtz scissors. These will cut through almost anything. It just snips it right off. If you do that on a flower, you have to make sure that you glue that back together because that um, little piece held the whole flower in place. Then I'm going to add another dollop of glue. I have a place on here that is where I had an issue. I'm hoping... 
I'm hoping my flower. Okay. That's what it looks like. It's not bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not as bad as it could be. I kind of like, I wet the uh, mica after everything had dried, the spray had dried. I used my spray ball and I wet it and I, well, I damp, dampened a cloth and um, rubbed everything so that the mica powder was more evenly coated on here because at some point um, there were some spots that were super mica powderish and it just didn't look consistent so I figured I would do that. So here it is on its side. I wish I had some leaves that I could put around that. Maybe I do. Let me look. I might have some poinsettia leaves. Oh, that'd be great if I did. I found some leaves and that made me happy because I'm now going to be able to make this look a little bit more, I don't know, less stark. I don't like just that gold. And what I thought I would do is, oh, knocked some things off my desk. I thought I would just put some of these leaves in, maybe I could tip this. Maybe I could, or maybe I'll knock it over. You don't know. Well, you probably do know. I will probably knock it over. I just don't want, I want you to be able to see it. All right, I'm hoping that it will stay there until I'm done. I found um, some like spirals that were on a pick, you know, like a floral pick. And then I found these leaves that clearly are not the right kind of leaves, but they're leaves, right? And I need some leaves, I think, to make this look better. So I'm trying to trim off some of the extra uh, wire on them. And I'm trying to make sure when I glue this in place that I glue the, I glue the leaf onto this poinsettia plant. Because I think if I do that, then um, you won't, there's too many gaps in that flower. And if I didn't do that, then those gaps would really uh, accentuate the fact that these leaves are not the right leaves. It would look, they would look weirder than they already look. I'm much happier with this. This was embarrassing to me that I even uh, was doing a video on it because it was so bad. And I've revamped it like four times and now I'm finally not unhappy with it. But here's, hopefully you can see it. I think those little spirals really made a big difference on it. Don't you? I wish I had some in gold. I think they'd be really fun. But, but for now, we're going with that. So that's what it looks like. I hope my girlfriend likes it. I hope that you guys try something like this and don't be afraid to fail because look at it, look at me. I failed really badly on this and I've got, uh, if you saw my jeans right now, you'd laugh because they're covered with gold mica powder and um, I still didn't give up. So that's important to note. I really hope you enjoyed this project and that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.